we're going to make some sauerkraut, the moment you've been waiting for. So a question I get a lot is what kind of cabbage um, should I use? Um, will it be different? Well, they will be different in that these cabbages are different and their flavors are different, but as far as the process, absolutely not. So I am going to use this, this guy today. And so the first thing you want to do is just remove these outer leaves. I, I always remove the, the first two and then kind of check in. If this one's dehydrated a little bit, I might remove that, but this one looks great. So we're gonna, we're gonna kraut this guy. So the first thing you're gonna do is just chop Chop the cabbage. Um, part of what we're doing here is cutting, cutting it into small pieces so that we're breaking apart the cell walls because we want to create a brine. Now, this is a place where you can choose how you want to chop your cabbage. Do you want it super thin? Do you want it chunkier, more of a, what you might call a farmhouse style? That's entirely up to you. Um, the thing to know is the chunkier your vegetable pieces, the harder it is to get that salt to get the brine going. So we're just gonna chop as we go. Oh, you know what? We're going to dump this out. I'm going to talk to you about how much salt to use. And there are two, two ways to use salt. Um, you can just do it by taste and feel, or you can measure your salt. Um, so in order to measure your salt, I like to use weight. Um, so we're gonna weigh this cabbage as it goes in. Now you could add any other vegetables. I'm just making a very simple sauerkraut for you but you can add onions, you can add carrots, any herbs and spices that you'd like. This is, this is your, your sauerkraut, you do it your way. So, in the video that we talked about salt percentages, this is how we're going to figure that out. So, like I said, I like, um, for most of my ferments, I'm happy with a 1.5% salt by weight. And so how I do that is I go to the scale um, and I figure out the weight of my vegetables. In this case, I have um, 1,040 grams of cabbage and we'll do 1,040 times 0 0.015 and that's going to give us 15.6 grams of salt. 
which is right around the tablespoon. Okay. We'll round up to 16. Now, what kind of salt do you want to use? You want to use um, any salt that that you like. The one thing that I have to say though is don't use iodized salt. So salt that has had iodine added to it. Now this salt is Redmond Real Salt. It is a um, natural mineralized salt. It's got iodine in it, but it's just in the trace mineral form. Often uh, sea salts might have iodine in them in a trace mineral form. Um, that is absolutely okay. Um, the thing you don't want is the added iodine because that could inhibit, inhibit your fermentation. So now all I'm doing is massaging the salt into the cabbage, and this is the exact same process you'd use for any vegetable. Uh, it's nice and juicy. I can really hear that. Um, now at this point, my salt is, is really mixed throughout here. I can keep massaging it. Um, if you don't have time to, to do that, that's fine. You can throw a tea towel over this and walk away for a half hour. And the salt will continue to draw out the juices. So um, conversely, if you have kids, this is a great project. Get their little hands in there and um, they love to do this. I don't know if you can tell, but the cabbage is looking like it's shrinking down in the bowl because we are definitely getting some good juices flowing here. So you're going to do this until you kind of see brine pulling up or you take and squeeze and see a nice um, drip of juice. Wait a little longer. Um, at this point, too, I suggest that you you taste you taste your creation because this is a point where you can add different things if you'd like. Um, I also said that I would tell you how to add salt if you're more of a taste and feel kind of cook. Um, so you taste it. And um, this is just a plain, plain sauerkraut, so I don't have that feeling of, oh, I better add more garlic or, or whatever, but the salt is right. What you want to taste for, though, is you want to taste for um, a pleasing salt, like the kind of salty chip, that kind of salt that I just want to keep eating that because it's really satisfying. Um, it doesn't need to be briny. It doesn't need to be over salty. Old recipes for fermentation would talk about packing in salt. You're certainly not packing in salt. You saw that was just about a tablespoon for this whole, whole cabbage. So that's what you want to taste for. You want to taste that you know that the salt is there, but not that it's overly salty. Um, you can all, I always suggest add less salt than you think it's going to be because it's really easy to keep adding salt. It's really hard to take out salt. What if you taste it and you think, oh my God, this is way too salty. Go ahead and decide, okay, I'm going to put another vegetable in here. You can add some carrots, you can add onions, um, whatever you'd like to kind of um, even that flavor out. The other thing is, what if you do this and you don't get all this brine? Um, see, this is really lovely now. It's very, very wet. This is what we want. Um, you can do things like add lemon juice. You can add, um, in sauerkraut, I think this is going to need the bigger jar. Grapefruit juice is wonderful. Um, 
Things like onions, again, are super juicy, so they're going to give you a lot of juice. And the reason I mention this is because sometimes you'll go to the store and um, perhaps the uh, cabbage has been in cold storage for a while, and you don't know that, um, and it ends up being kind of a dry, sort of dehydrated head of cabbage. Um, but you can mitigate that with just a little bit of something juicy. Okay, so now we're just going to pack it into a jar. Um, this is a place where you just need a jar. That's it. You really don't need any special equipment. It doesn't even need to be a canning jar. It can be whatever, whatever jar you have. Um, and ideally it's the right size jar. Maybe could have fit it in, in here. I'm <laughs> sort of second guessing my choice. And the reason is, is because you like to have your jar kind of near the top. You want some, some space because remember I said that CO2 is going to create um, air pockets, which is going to shoot your brine out if it's too full. But um, you also don't want so much air space that you can't get that oxygen out of there. Um, and I'll explain that in just a second. But we're going to go with just the, this jar for the, for the time being. OK, so you notice I'm pressing that in. So you're going to want to press that in um, and kind of get, use a, use a clean dish cloth or something and you can wipe off the sides of that inside of that jar. And the reason is is if anything that you don't want is going to grow, it's going to grow where the oxygen can reach. Um, if you think about the ferment, its weakest spot is this top spot where the oxygen is. But see, this has a great brine and so that brine is what's going to keep it wonderful. Now I'm going to take this leaf and I'm going to use that as kind of a sacrificial cabbage leaf. Um, it's going to do a couple of things for me. It's going to help me keep everything pressed under the brine and it's also going to be the spot if something were to grow on there, um, say surface yeast or mold, it will be what you get to throw away. Everything underneath will be just fine. That is kind of the other beauty of fermentation is how do I know is it bad or not? Um, you will know because it will let you know. Uh, with something like canning, you've got these hidden odorless botulism microbes or spores that can make you sick and you don't even know that they're there. With fermentation, um, if something's bad, it's going to be gross. Your five senses will let you know, do not put me in your mouth. Um, and if something's going to get gross, it will get gross from oxygen, which will be on the top. So that is part of why we want to minimize our airspace. So what's going on, whoops, here we go. What's going on here is the simplest way, uh, there's, there's lots of things. I mean, there's, there's these lids. Um, this one will let your pressure out. What you're going to want is to let pressure out. Um, there's crocs. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things to help you. But we're going to keep this as simple as possible. And in that case, what you're going to do is you're going to hang out with your ferment there for the, that first week or two. Um, and just kind of experience what's going on. So when I opened this earlier, you saw that um, it's probably even built up again. Now my hands are wet. Okay, that there was some bubbling, right? Oh, there it is. There's the bubbles. Um, and I'm going to push that down. You can see these Maybe you can see, hopefully you can see there's some bubbling going on here. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing that down to get all that brine to move back 
into the, the spaces um, and be anaerobic again. I don't need to do that every time. I'm just showing you guys. So how I'm going to manage this ferment, right, is every day this gets a burp. That releases the pressure. You might have noticed there's an apple on here. Um, I'm using that just because it, it works as a weight. Um, that apple is going to press up on that lid and help weigh down the sauerkraut so that it doesn't um, heave all the way out. Because if you have a nice juicy cabbage like this, when it's in the full active fermentation, it will just blow all over the place. Um, so that's why you're keeping it closed. And what happens with keeping it closed that's cool is um, that CO2 builds up, right? Um, and it's heavier than oxygen. So when I'm burping this, and burping just means that quick twist and then close, when I'm burping this, that oxygen is on top and it's being pushed out. And now I have a blanket of CO2 on top of these ferments. Um, so when I said earlier, if I have too much air space in here, it's gonna be a lot harder for me to get all that out with that, that burping. Um, it'll be fine, but ideally I would have a jar that, you know, it, it's up to there in. So that's, that's all, that's what you do. You're gonna put this on your counter. Um, if you have a weight, I mean, you can, for something like this, you can actually take another jar, fill it with salt or with um, water, and that is actually gonna function as a weight. When that pushes up, it's gonna press that against the lid and help keep all that um, brine under there. That's it. Um, it's gonna do all the work. All you're gonna do is you're gonna come once a day, you're gonna kind of check, is there pressure built up? If there is, you're gonna give it a little burp um, and then go about your day. And once you deem it finished, which we talked about in the earlier video, you're gonna put that in your fridge and um, enjoy it from there, from there on out. So there you go. It really is, even though I talk a lot, it really is a very simple process.